last Monday morning at 8 o'clock, I reported to the jail. And this thing has turned into a real nightmare. And I just want y'all to know that the welfare... They think they're so, they think they're so bad and so powerful. Well, I just want to know God is more powerful. It's an insult to God's work and God's people that support these homes to accuse us of doing irreparable damage to children when we make no charge and have done nothing but love them and lift them and teach them to sing the praises of God. Girls, do you love Jesus? Oh, yes, we love Jesus. Are you sure, Jesus? Yes, we sure we love Jesus. Then tell me why you love Jesus. This is why we love Jesus. The only words of me. Oh, how I love Jesus. And oh, Uh, to have Leanne and this graduation was greatly disturbed the night they came. A great statesman once said that you can judge a nation by the kind of heroes it produces. Lester Roloff is such a man. He came from humble beginnings, born and raised on a farm south of Dawson, Texas. In 1933, he took his milk cow and went to Baylor University in Waco, Texas. After pastoring a number of Baptist churches in Texas, he went into evangelism and began working with people in trouble. It is an unusual person indeed who sacrifices all for a life of caring for others. But the Lord had given him a burden for people, alcoholics, narcotic addicts, juvenile delinquents, anyone in trouble. He built homes for men and women and boys and girls in trouble. The lighthouse, the anchor, the city of refuge, the Rebecca home. Disaster struck many times. Men with less faith would have given up in the face of such overwhelming odds. The voice of Brother Roloff is heard nationwide on the Family Altar radio broadcast, which he began more than 30 years ago. When Lester Roloff began building homes for the down and out over a quarter century ago, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare was just a small, insignificant bureau in Washington. Now it has grown into a monster that holds neither God nor the Bill of Rights in high regard. In 1973, the Welfare Department closed down his home for girls in Corpus Christi because he had no license. It was reopened, but Brother Roloff is still fighting for his rights. It is the intention of this film to show the ministry that Lester Roloff directs, reveal the nightmarish persecution he has endured, and to show that unless America wakes up soon, it will be freedom's last call. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for just uh, the many blessings, Lord, that's been ours. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. We ask, thank you, Lord, for the service that we was in this morning. Lord, we just pray now that you'll bless this food, bless each one that's here, and bless the hands of prepared it. Go with us, guide us throughout this day, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we believe that the best act for the girls is uh, 
just good wholesome food. And we like to, when we have, uh, when we plan a meal and a menu, we try to plan it around the calories and the right, uh, the things that, that, you know, efficient for the body to make it uh, function properly. And these girls have mostly, that come in, they have been on just a meager diet. They, some of them have eaten just anything they can get their hands on for days. And we bring them in here, and our food that we have is uh, uh, fresh grown food. Our vegetables are grown here on the farm, and we don't season highly with uh, any kind of grease. Uh, what we season with is mostly margarine or butter. And uh, we have very uh, little fried foods. We uh, bake, uh, as you see today, we have baked turkey. We have chicken. We serve mostly baked chicken. Occasionally we fry it for the girls. Mostly it's baked. It takes 100 gallons um, of honey a month for all of our homes. The girls will eat five gallons every three days. And uh, this is some we took off. We've taken off about 600 gallons. Of course, our onions uh, and uh, potatoes and uh, tomatoes. Um, I tell you, it's wonderful what and the, uh, uh, the strain honey here we've just gotten out of the valley. And we remove our bees about uh, three times a year. They, um, this, of course, is my honeybee right here. Huh? <laughs> this is my little granddaughter. But this is Ms. Roloff here. And she's down here. The week she came down, you know, I had to go to jail, didn't I? I but you came and got, and got me out, didn't you? I guarantee you, boy. <laughs> we really got out of that jail in a hurry when you come down there. If you'd come down a little quicker, I believe maybe I'd have got out of there quicker. But you and Nana, and she called her Nana, didn't she? If you'd come down and early and you'd got me out, you'd let me stay in there too long. You know it. I really did, but I'm glad I'm out now. But anyhow, say this is something... Honey, that I got last night for my birthday. Now the just shall live by faith. That's our theme, you know, for our life. And I found over in the book of uh, Habakkuk and um, Galatians and uh, Romans and then Hebrews 10.38. And some dear lady fixed that far, so I thought it was real nice. But we enjoy uh, eating off of the farm. We enjoy, uh, and this is part of the Rebecca home, part of all of our homes. We have, of course, six homes, but... And uh, tomorrow I'll be going over to Galoden, Georgia, and they'll have produce over there. And we'll stop back by Hattiesburg, Mississippi in the afternoon, and they'll have a lot of watermelons and produce over there. So it's real interesting. But the main thing is, and we're growing boys and girls. Make sure you get it straight now. Make sure you focus it correct. When the girls come here, they usually haven't had proper training in the things that help young girls in their future lives as a wife, a mother, a lady. At the Rebecca home, the girls learn these things and skills that will help them find jobs when they leave here. We believe that the Bible tells us uh, that uh, without discipline, a child cannot learn without a disciplined classroom. And then also, our school is biblically based. All of our subjects are taught with the idea that God has a plan for every person. And, and whether it's uh, English or history or social studies or science, since God is the God of all, then it's all based on the foundation of the Bible. Our school is an ACE school, Accelerated Christian Education, whose headquarters is in Dallas, Texas. And of course, this puts the child on their own learning level. Most of our children who come from public schools are, cannot read on their own level. And so we must provide remedial reading. Their math also is very weak. In fact, a uh, recent article in the U.S. News and World Report referred to the fact that uh, the new English and the new math had failed, and now they must, of course, go back and uh, remedy that. So that means that almost uh, a generation of young people were crippled because of an experiment in the public school system. We have, um, of course, boys and girls that come here, all of them in trouble. We don't um, have anybody that ever comes to the public in trouble. We call them terminal. Everything else is already failed, and uh, they come as a last resort. I've heard on this telephone right here, 
And this, I answer that phone, and I'm the only one that answers it because so many people call direct. Ms. Roloff has her phone upstairs, but they called me and they said, this is urgent. I said, the last one was too. This is an emergency. And I said, well, the last one was too. Nearly all of them are because boys and girls, boys and girls are in trouble all over the country. But I want to say to all the friends that send their children, and you can call us any time, day or night. There are times when I have to leave the telephone on the floor in order to go to sleep at night or get some rest, usually 11 or 12 o'clock until about 4 or 5 in the morning. And I praise the Lord for the privilege of operating these homes. It was sing uh, Psalm 19. Will you do that? This is one of our favorite chapters, and this is where I stand. The law of the Lord is perfect. That's the reason I'm going to stay with it. You say, what's that? The Word of God. The law of the Lord, that's what we go by. Statutes, man-made, unscriptural, unconscious, they don't mean anything to me. The law of the Lord is the law that we go by. Psalm 19. worth going to jail for. Uh, only God could present a sound and produce a sound like that. Oh, if you'd have seen them when they came in. And can you imagine my Lone Star State, my native state, closing down ministries like these? There's something haywire in this country. And we need to return to the Word of God and to uh, Jesus. Father, we're conscious tonight that there are many friends here Visitors are here. No doubt some are so empty and miserable and unhappy and without peace. Lord, show them they're in the midst now of an opportunity that could solve every problem they've got. And Father, speak to the mothers and dads. Thank you for these that have come to the altar tonight. We're going to close the service tonight by saying and singing, I want to do
these precious little girls with their lives wrecked, their hopes shattered, come and meet the Savior and get saved, born again. Their lives are made whole and they find something worth living for. Brother Roloff also operates a home for girls in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. As the most progressive state in the South, Mississippi has not attempted to pass any laws restricting the operation of such church-related homes. I want to give a testimony uh, while somebody stands by me. Beth, will you come? And I want to tell the young people, you might notice when Beth comes, she's going to be limping. She has an artificial limb. This is what dope has done to a little girl, just 14. And this home has helped. And I believe the last letter I got was so sweet and so fine. And I'd like, since we're crowded for time, I'd like to say that this little girl was run over by a train, and the train never didn't know it. But there was a boy that did like a lot of boys that uh, got her on some dope. She ran away from her mother and daddy who loved her, and um, she lay there for a lot of hours, about four hours maybe, and um, the boy was killed instantly. Just a few pounds of him was found left. And when she looked up and saw a headlight coming and tried to figure out what it was, and it was another train, and she reached down, but one of her legs was gone, her foot was gone, and she touched the other one and found out that she still had one she rolled off of the track. Now, talk about a miracle in rescuing a little girl. Jesus must have loved her real good. And, of course, we do, too. But uh, he spared her life. And she screamed, I'm sure, as any little girl would scream when she realized that she'd been mangled by a train. But remember, the daddy of that tragedy was dope and rebellion and running from mother and from dad. The best friend a little girl ever had down here is a Christian mother and dad. But somebody heard her cry. Like Jesus heard my cry. I'd been run over by the railroad train of sin. And Jesus rescued me. And um, she went to the hospital and lingered for a number of days. And you'd say it's so good that the train saved her and stopped her from running. That's not the case. Tragedy doesn't stop you. It'll take truth. And that's Jesus. Accidents won't save you, but providence will. And so when she got her artificial limb that she's learned to walk real good on, she decided she just didn't like it at home because she still had heart trouble, sin trouble. And she went right back to the same old pig pen that she was in. And in trouble, and her mother brought her here after hearing about the Bethesda home. And it'd be hard for anybody to stay here long without uh, breaking out with love and getting a hold of something good and right. And so we've prayed a many a time for Beth. The devil would like to prove that Jesus is not real, but he is real. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that Beth has been saved and y'all are helping her a great deal. And I want her to keep on growing in grace and she ought to be a limping testimony <laughs> against dope. We also work with boys. We keep them 50 miles down in a coastal waterway at a place called the Lighthouse that's operated for about a fifth of a century. All of them in trouble with the law. We take only terminal cases at the Lighthouse. Boys that nobody else would take. No license home would take. And yet their problem is sin. Therefore, Jesus Christ is 
the answer. All these boys would be in jail if they were not here. And we furnish plenty of fruit, watermelon, fresh air, fresh fish, and fresh fellowship, best of all. And the biggest swimming pool in the world, I guess. All right, boys, time for watermelon hey, break. Hey, Amen. Hey, that's all right. Crack him open, boys. Hey, we need a hot man. Hey. <laughs> man alive. You talk about medicine, Jack. Man, look here, son. Now, you're the superintendent, huh? Huh? Come on, now. Boy, I tell you what, huh? Hey, mm. sir. Boy, isn't that good? Yes, sir. I tell you the truth. Yeah. Well, say, listen, we're down here at the lighthouse. I see the boys swimming over here. <laughs> They're trying to get over here, aren't they? They saw the watermelon cut. But uh, this is the Lighthouse International Airport. We're standing here with the boys and got a lot of watermelons we brought to them. And I tell you what, we have a great time. Amen. All these boys have been saved. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All the way from West Indies, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. That's right. Boy, he got his testimony that he said, let us pray. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I do. Boy, everybody bowed to you, know. Thank God, mighty quiet around there when he said, let's pray. <laughs> well, I tell you, we just had a wonderful time. And, uh, boys, I like that watermelon. We just got those out of the field while ago. They're kind of warm. We just got them, picked them out of the field, and brought them in the airplane, and uh, brought a load of fruit. Well, the Bible said we ought to bear fruit. Amen? Amen. And so here we are. All right. Hey, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, that's good. That's good. Really We'd like to say to all of our radio friends, thank you for the spot to home where they raised the watermelon. Everywhere we've been, the last few days we've had watermelon. Hey, boy. Jack. You'd be in the penitentiary, wasn't for being here, and they wouldn't serve watermelon like this. You know. What I mean? <laughs> 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 hey, boy, that's a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> well, 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 we do have a great time, and I tell you one thing: <laughs> the boys wouldn't be getting this kind of watermelon at the jailhouse. When we arrive and land on the little dirt runway and by the edge of the King Ranch, we always go straight to the chapel. And the boys are all there, ready to sing. And this is really our workshop. And this is where the Savior carries on his business meeting and um, gives the boys the heart transplant, makes them new creatures in Christ, and old things pass away. And behold, all things become new. And then we teach them another thing, and that's to do the will of God in their life. I love the lighthouse. The boys have caught our fish for us. They laid them. And um, we've had many heartaches and dangers. It's the most dangerous home that I've ever had. We've never had any serious accidents until lately. The devil has made some mighty attacks. And the enemy has done his best to use it to close our doors. The lighthouse must keep its light burning. We want all of our people to pray for us that the Lord will bless us and supply our needs. Folks, I wish y'all would help us build a dormitory. I really do. We need a dormitory for 60 boys on the ground. I mean, can you imagine that plane bringing most of the groceries and the boats coming 50 miles in the water? Let's just bow our heads, boys, and pray, will you? You know, we prayed for a flotel. You remember that? Yeah. No, so I'll give you twice as much as you got when we knelt in the ash pile. Our Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll give us a dormitory. I need to build dormitories for boys on the ground. I've got too many down at the lighthouse, and I plan to bring them in. In fact, I plan to build a dormitory for boys immediately. And we're going to get started. We've got to put them on the ground, leave a fishing crew down there, 30, 40, and something like that. And then we need to build the gymnasium and health center for the girls. We've got to build a new cafeteria for the girls. We've got to build a dormitory for women that are in trouble. And we've got to build a dormitory for widows and orphans, people that are in trouble. And we know what to do with them and help them bring their children up in the nurture. And admonition, Lord, it saved millions and millions of tax dollars to take care of the children and the widows 
without them having to run the streets and become criminals. We keep the younger boys up through age 16 and even up to 18 down in Zapata, Texas. And this is where we grow many watermelons as well as fine boys. Brother Harmon Oxford is the superintendent and Brother John Bradley is that uh, wonderful principal of our ACE school. One of our boys, Frank Vanco, wrote an essay on Old Glory, which won first place at the annual ACE convention at Lynchburg, Virginia. Old Glory, I've seen many a picture of you when you were in your prime. How properly were you named Old Glory? I've seen many a portrait of you as you appeared to Francis Scott Key when you waved over Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. How proudly you waved and every right you had to do so. You represent that which was good and clean and worth the giving up of even one's life. Yet, Old Glory, these were just pictures, reminders of days gone by. As I look upon you now, my heart bleeds. No longer do you proudly wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. No longer are you respected and honored. No, now you are spat upon and misused. No longer does that old eagle stand proudly above you and cry liberty and justice for all. No, now she sits with wings closed, shoulders slouched, her beak gnarled and crooked. Old glory, truly you are old. This year is your 200th birthday, but you are no longer glorious. Ichabod has been written across you and the nation for which you stand. For your people have turned their backs on the one who made them great. I can close my eyes and picture you waving over Fort McHenry. The bombs exploding in the air reveal you as you boldly stand out against the sky. Your blood-red stripes stand and cry, this is the price of freedom. Though the Declaration of Independence was written in ink, it was sealed with the blood of those who signed it. As I behold your red stripes, I think of the courage these men had to lay down their lives for the freedom of their children to come. Yet now you do not look the same as I had pictured you. Your red stripes are now a faded pink. Your people are no longer brave. No longer will they stand and fight for that which is right. Lawbreakers are their heroes. They have glorified losing to the point that they have now lost their first war. No longer are they a powerful, respected nation. The world now stands and laughs at them. Old glory, why have your people turned from the one who made them great? Your white stripes are no longer so. Now they are a dirty gray. Your people no longer care to be pure. They no longer seek after holiness. No longer is the Lord's day honored. And morality is encouraged across the land. Your people laugh at those who practice holiness and smile upon those who live in sin. They have wallowed in Satan's pig pen, and now, old glory, they are paying the price. For you see, the nation for which you stand is dying. As I see your stars on a field of blue, I think of the stars in the heavens. I ask, can those heavenly bodies exist by themselves? No, if it were not for the omnipotent hand of God, those stars would disintegrate and fly apart, never to be seen again. Yet, old glory, your people think they can exist without Almighty God. They have kicked him out of the home, the school, and the government, and look what has happened. The force courts are filled to capacity. Policemen patrol the halls of your schools to protect, protect teachers from students. Our government is full of nothing but corruption. Oh, glory, your people have proven a nation cannot stand without God. As I look at you, all I see are the ashes of what was once a great nation. Yet through the darkness, I see a ray of hope. I hear a voice as it cries, if your people will turn back to me and seek my face, I will forgive their sin and cleanse their land. Old glory, all is not lost. There is still hope. But first, your people must return to God. Then, once more, can you proudly wave above the land? Then, and only then, will that old eagle be able to stand tall and spread her wings and boldly cry, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Now also when I'm old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I've showed thy strength unto this generation, thy power to everyone that is to come. And today, we're down in the Peaceful Valley home. Out of six homes, this is the only home, really, that undergirds us. The rest of them we have to undergird. And so here in the Peaceful Valley home, it's another work of faith. We make no charge. The people agree to give what they can, and uh, we try to see that that is sufficient. And there's some who have a hard time. And I feel that uh, this is a, 
not a commercial home. It's not a home for people to come to die, but come to live and come to pray. And in this prayer room right here is where I believe that much of my protection has come from. While I was in jail last week, I believe that uh, this group were as faithful as anybody could be to pray. Some of our folks are not able to kneel down. Others are. But all are able to pray. And uh, the seasoned saints of the Peaceful Valley home, located in the Red Grande Valley where the fruit is so beautiful and where something grows all the time, I mean, in the way of vegetables and, of course, the fruit. About six or eight months out of the year, we have fresh fruit. It's so many wonderful things. And, of course, our standards here are like they are everywhere else. God has blessed our ministers because we've stood. And we're going to continue to stand. We want to eat right, live right, and then we want to speak the right message. And we want to take care of our older people. I don't think there's a more loving place on earth than the Peaceful Valley home. It's a real joy when we see the runway at the City of Refuge and the folks coming down to greet us. For the Johnny Davis is the superintendent. I think that's wept more over sinners than any man I know of this generation. We have a home for alcoholics and narcotic addicts. We take in people that are defeated because of liquor and because of drugs, and we work with them to help them overcome their problems. And the way we work with them is that um, we take them in and we use the Word of God because we believe that Christ is the answer uh, to these people. Uh, the problems that they have can only be solved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what we work with them. We have Bible study every morning. Uh, every day we have Bible study, and, and the people respond to the Word of God, and they, they get delivered from their problem, uh, which is sin, we believe. Well, the rules are if they come here, they stay for 90 days. We have no uh, tobacco of any form. We have no tranquilizers. They're not allowed to drink or take any dope while they're here. We have no newspaper, no television sets, and uh, we just uh, study the Word of God for 90 days. We keep them for 90 days. Well, this is a beautiful old antebellum home that's uh, been here for uh, since the days of Sherman, back in the Civil War, and uh, the lady that... Uh, was born in this home, Miss uh, Susanna Troutman was the, the lady that designed the Texas flag, and she was born in this house, her mother and daddy moved away to Texas right after she was born, uh, but uh, it's been a, a historical uh, old house for uh, many years. Well, it's always an exciting time when Brother Wolof comes from Corpus to the City of Refuge. We always look forward for the big plane to come sailing in, land on the runway, and we greet him. Then we always wind up at the chapel for our service. And it's so good to have him to come our way today. And it's good to have a number of friends visiting with us today here at the City of Refuge. You're always welcome. And uh, we kind of real privilege for friends to come. We just finished a meeting in uh, Milledgeville, with Brother Layfield, and we had a great time. Many souls were saved. And a number of those people are here today. Bro, it's good to have you come. 
and take over. Thank you, Brother Johnny. My theme for today and this year is I'm not through at 62. <laughs> this is my birthday. 62 years ago, the Lord was gracious enough to let me discover America in a home uh, that demanded that I go to church. And that's where I got saved. And so I'm glad to be here at the city, and we have some special things. Brother Johnny, if we ever go a day without a miracle, we're sunk. I mean, it's all over. We've got to have a miracle. I think I'll introduce some of the miracles today. I think that'd be nice. I invited a fellow by the name of Bill Henderson. I spent many a tense time uh, thinking, I'm glad the Lord never worries. But if he'd ever worried, he'd worried with me about Bill. I tell you, I, I was so tense and so under pressure when the, uh, the judge said, now you know that I'm going to send him to the pen today. Those are just the words he said. I'm going to send him to the pen today. And we're going to sentence him today. And then I, I started looking for some sort of excuse to postpone. And he said, is your lawyer here? And I said, no, sir. I'm the only lawyer there is. And, of course, he wouldn't let me practice law. Uh, of course, I think I'd do a better job than some of them. Yeah. But I ain't got no license, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I said, well, Judge, let's, uh, let's postpone. I mean, just put it off. And I said, Judge, uh, I, I don't know. I heard somebody say that uh, you could get two probations and starting next year, and that's about November, I think. He said, I haven't heard anything about that. This attorney spoke up and said, we haven't heard anything about it. Well, I said, it'd be good for all of us to check on it, wouldn't it? I'll go back and ask my lawyer, and y'all find out. And, and I said, if, we, if it's going to be, because he's already had one probation. He couldn't have one in Texas at that time. But to make a long story short, the Lord uh, let us get him out. They postponed the trial until January. He got his second probation, and he's on probation to me for 12, nearly 12 years. Been preaching ever since. And I never did have to revoke his probation. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Roloff. It's a real honor to be here on your 62nd birthday. And this makes some 13 years now that I've been acquainted with the Roloff Enterprises. Brother Roloff took me out of the jail 13 years ago in February took me under his care, took me to the lighthouse, and began to teach me the Word of God. And then just a few months later, he took me off to Tennessee Temple Schools. I didn't know there were that many Christian young people in all the world, much right. less in one place. Yes. And they only had about 900 students there. Then they have around 4,000 now. I thank God for this ministry, for what it's meant to my life. My brother Roloff has stood by us through the years. Uh, been the dearest friend I've ever had on this earth. And I thank God for this ministry, how God is still using it to reach the unreachable, to touch the untouchable. I thank the Lord for the privilege of having a little part in it, in bringing boys and girls to a place where I know they can receive lasting help and sound. And that's just one of the miracles. Through Brother Bill's conversion, many more have come to know Jesus Christ. Yes, the city of refuge is a place of miracles. We live on miracles here. And that's because we depend on the Lord to give victory to those who come here for help. And the wonderful folks built this little cabin. It used to be a boathouse. I've had many wonderful times reading, praying and resting down on this beautiful lake. Oh, how peaceful. Hear the frogs, the old bullfrogs at night and the whippoorwills as they whistle their same tune. But I've got to where I like it. And I praise the Lord for a place like this. And finally the time comes when we must leave. With a heavy heart sometimes I say goodbye those old pine trees and this old red clay but I know the love of our friends here will be with us as we go our way
homes that Brother Roloff operates in the state of Texas are all in legal jeopardy. To continue their operation, he must acquire a license from the welfare department. If Brother Roloff gets this license, he would have to alter his standards and methods which have proved successful and adopt state standards which have proven unsuccessful. Brother Roloff is contesting the welfare department and the legality of these laws. 10 o'clock at night, between 10 and 11 o'clock at night, they had complete liberty and freedom. They wound up closing us down, kicking out 300 people. I have a right not to let them in. I know what they're up to. And I told them, so I said, you're coming to destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. You're planning to close us or either bring us under your domina uh, domination and your control. And I said, we cannot let you. And I know what I'm talking about. I want to tell you what happened. And this is just bringing you up to date a little bit because you got kind of, this ought to stir you up to get in a fight. Get in or get out one. And so Thursday, we'd already been to the court. The judge said five days in jail, $2,000 fine. And right on the heels of that, they went right back to Austin and got an Austin judge, the Honorable Judge Myers, and I certainly have nothing against him, and my lawyers know, and they know, they've been trying to say, Brother Olaf will not defy your court, you've got out an order, uh, but uh, we, we uh, decided not to let them. I mean, I, I, don't, I just don't believe they've gotten the right to run our churches and schools and homes. I believe that our nation has the death rattle in its throat. It's drowning or suffocating on the emphysema of its own wickedness. I notice where in an alcohol of a narcotic home in Texas, they spend $23 million a year on 600. You divide that up and it's over 30,000 people. I mean, $30,000, you see, that they're spending. What a waste. And yet we take care of all these girls and all these folks uh, for maybe $150 a month, make no charge, and still have to go to jail. Uh, for saving the taxpayers their money, and then we rescue the girls, lead them to Christ and the boys, and all around here, our boys have come from all over the country. So, uh, we're glad to go to jail for all of this. Well, uh, I'm not defying the court, I'm defying the, the, the rules and regulations uh, that are made by an unlawful delegation of authority. The welfare has become legislated instead of it. They want made the law, these little old statutes. They're not worth the paper they're written on. 
ungodly and un-American and unscriptural and un-everything else. We have no, I'm not obligated to live under such stuff as that. Here's my book. Here's my book. We go over this book right here. And so these girls, everyone that you see marching into this courthouse, each one of them would be glad to go to jail with me today. Amen? Amen. The last one of them, all the boys would be glad to go to jail with me. I mean, this is a cause. You news media, start fighting for children. Forget about Uncle Roly. He'll make it. I'm 62. One week from today. And uh, so the cause is what I'm concerned about. And I hope you'll do your best for the children. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your life. Brother Roloff has been coming to the Corpus Christi jail for years to preach to the inmates here. Now he comes as a prisoner himself. The state has declared him a criminal for upholding the Word of God and the Bill of Rights, America's foundations of liberty, freedom, and justice. There's something unforgettable time we'll ever have. That was when 400 left. I stood upstairs here a many a night and looked over and prayed. There was a head on every pillow and a little body on every bed. And the next night the lights were all off. And Granny walked the halls and looked in those empty rooms. And the doctor sent she and Brother Weatherford home to East Texas to heal up and said it'll take two years, don't come back. They stayed away two years because of the shocking experience they had of losing their children. Little children clung to their necks and said, don't let them take me. Just don't let them take me. Said, I want to stay. 
and it reminds you of communism taking over in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Surely the people of Texas and of this great country whose freedom has been soaked in the blood of our pure Puritan forefathers will never let that happen again. To that task, I've committed my life, whether in life or in death, whether in jail or out of jail. We must never let these homes close again because there's no place for them to go, not any place, all the way from Alaska to the sleepy Rio Grande and from Honolulu to the mango trees of the West Indies. That's where they come from. And we must keep these homes open. You've just watched a part of New Testament church history. You have seen what the state of Texas did to the ministry of Brother Lester Roloff. This man was put in jail. He was fined. He spent a million dollars for legal fees to try to keep the homes open so that he could continue to help men and women and boys and girls that needed help. He's been dead now for almost 23 years, but no one has succeeded to stop this ministry. We are still continuing. We take men and women here in Corpus, in our homes, and through our network of homes throughout America, we are still working with boys and teenage girls. We are worthy of your support. We're worthy of your prayers, and we ask you to pray for us and to support us and send us your people that need help. We will do our very best for them. We grieve every day that Brother Roloff is not here, but we are doing our best to do what he would have us to do and what the Lord would have us to do. Pray for us. I'm Pastor Charles Crump, and I desire your prayers and your help. May the Lord bless you.